Hi, I'm Sophia, Communications Council Law Pro, and I'm your host today. Welcome to our second video focusing on area of law claim trends, stories, and tips. If you have not seen our real estate claims video yet, you can find it on Law Pro's YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about the common reasons for claims against wills and estates lawyers. I have some claims data and real claim-based stories to share and tips to avoid this happening to you. Wills and estates claims by count is the third highest category of total claims on average per year. And also the third leading area of law by cost of claims. For wills and estates specifically, inadequate investigation, communications, and error of law are the common areas leading to a claim. Today we're going to go through examples of some of these claim types and some real claim-based stories. The stories will be shared by our claims counsel. The story will be about our fictional lawyer, Mr. Harvey Ross, but the stories themselves will be real. Are you surprised to learn that area of law only makes up 13% of claims versus inadequate investigation makes up 38% of claims on average? Not digging deeper is generally the root cause of inadequate investigation related claims. Here's a real claim based story. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm one of the claims counsel here at LawPro. Harvey Ross was retained by Jane Smith to draft her will. Jane is mother to three adult children and recently separated from her spouse. Jane visited Harvey's office twice, accompanied by her boyfriend. She instructed Harvey to leave her entire estate to her boyfriend, excluding her estranged spouse and three adult children. Five days after signing the will, Jane passed away. Her spouse challenged the will, alleging undue influence and questioning Jane's mental capacity due to her illness. The challenge led to a legal claim against Harvey, questioning whether he had done enough to ensure that Jane's will reflected her true intentions. Harvey recalled Jane's wish to exclude her spouse, but didn't probe into why her children were also left out. He didn't ask about her assets or liabilities or about matters that may impact the legal advice Harvey would have given had he collected the appropriate information. Furthermore, there's a question of capacity as the deceased was ill, but there were no notes to this effect about either capacity or undue influence. The claim was eventually mediated. Jane's boyfriend received some funds and her spouse received the remaining amount, with LawPro contributing a large amount towards costs. Harvey should have taken several key steps. First, inquired about Jane's assets and family tree. Secondly, independently confirmed Jane's wishes without her boyfriend's presence. Third, ask probing questions about excluding her spouse and children. And finally, advise Jane on the family law implications of excluding her spouse from the will. This case highlights the importance of thorough due diligence. As legal professionals, we must ensure we collect sufficient information to provide legal advice that meets the appropriate standard of care of a prudent lawyer and ensure our clients are of sound mind and their wishes are generally their own. Communications is the second leading cause of error. Most communication issues are due to poor client management, such as not following client's instructions, obtaining their consent, keeping them informed, ensuring they understand, and documenting well to avoid he said, she said, they said. Here's a claim-based story where Harvey made a communication error. I'm Chris Stankovich, Senior Claims Counsel at LawPro. Harvey Ross was retained by Mr. Miller to prepare a will. On more than one occasion, Mr. Miller expressed his intention to leave his estate equally among his three sons including shares in a lucrative corporation that made up the bulk of his assets. Mr. Miller's eldest son attended the will signing meeting with Mr. Miller and last minute changes were made to the will. Mr. Miller expressed concerns about his youngest son having trouble handling money. The eldest son suggested that the shares of the corporation be left to him and the middle son and assured his father that he would manage the corporation just like Mr. Miller did. Harvey's notes indicate that Mr. Miller asked for his opinion, and Harvey suggested the eldest son's idea may be worth considering under the circumstances. The will was amended, leaving the shares of the corporation to the two eldest sons, while the residue of the estate was divided equally among all three sons. After Mr. Miller's passing, the youngest son brought a claim, stating that their father had always intended to divide everything equally. 
The total indemnity and expenses incurred on this file amounted to just under $1 million. Harvey should have taken several critical steps. He should have met with Mr. Miller privately to ensure his true wishes were being expressed without external influence. Harvey should have refrained from giving personal opinions and focused solely on legal advice. Harvey should have fully explained the legal consequences of the 11th hour change to Mr. Miller to ensure he understood the potential fallout. Given Mr. Miller's consistent instructions to divide everything equally, Harvey should have reassessed whether the last minute change truly reflected Mr. Miller's wishes or if it was a result of confusion or undue influence. And while the change could be made in draft format, Harvey should have advised delaying the signing. This would have given Mr. Miller time to think it over and ensure he was making an informed decision. This case highlights the importance of being mindful of clients' wishes and instructions while being vigilant of external influences during estate planning. Failure to know the law is a third leading cause of claims. We know there are two types of law regimes in Ontario, substantive and case law. While both may be challenging to keep up with at times, it is vital to be up to date with the law to ensure that the legal service you're providing is to the standard of a competent lawyer. Here is a real claim-based story. My name is JJ Earl Miller. I'm one of the claims counsel in-house at Law Pro, and I'm in the new claims unit. Lawyer Harvey Ross was retained by a Ms. Jones to prepare a new will. The client, having recently remarried, wanted to ensure that her new spouse would be provided for during his lifetime through means of a spousal trust. The client had previously had both a primary and a secondary will. When Harvey drafted her new will, he made several critical errors. First, although the will referenced a secondary will, Harvey only drafted one will, which Ms. Jones signed. There was confusion whether that new will was intended to replace only the previous primary will, and the effect of the new marriage was unclear. But the new will stated that all previous wills were revoked. The new will also failed to define which specific assets were covered by the new will. Additionally, trust provisions for the children and the spouse were missing crucial details including a gift over provision in the spousal trust clause. Lastly, a trust clause for the cottage was copied from the previous will without considering its practical implications alongside the new trust clauses. Due to these drafting errors, the intended distribution plan could not be understood after the client died. The estate brought an application seeking directions from the court and eventually sued Harvey for negligence. LawPro ultimately paid a settlement to the claimant. Harvey should have taken a few key steps. First, he should have thoroughly reviewed the client's previous wills and clarified her intentions regarding having multiple wills versus a single will, especially since a significant portion of her estate comprised shares in a private corporation. Second, Harvey should have avoided copying clauses from the old will without assessing the compatibility with the new provisions and Ms. Jones' new intentions. Third, he needed to spend more time educating himself on the proper drafting of trusts, ensuring both the children's and the spousal trusts were correctly and comprehensively set up. Lastly, he should have provided the client with advice on the implications of the Family Law Act. This case underscores the importance of continuous learning in legal practice. Lawyers must ensure they know the law and accurately draft legal documents to avoid costly mistakes. In our most recent magazine, there's a conversation piece with one of our claims counsel and leading wills and estates lawyer. Here's our summary of the key takeaways in that article. Dig deeper and ask probing questions. Get a full picture of the estate, assets, liabilities, family tree, document everything. Flag the right issues, know who your client is, take instructions from them and ensure your client has capacity and there's no undue influence. Retainer and closing letters are vital for the simplest to most complex files.
Find our most recent magazine with dedicated articles relating to the practice of wills and estates on our Law Pro website. In addition, you can also find an abundance of risk management resources on our Practice Pro website. We're also on social media sharing timely, substantive, and interesting content. If you have a risk management question, please contact us at Practice Pro and we'll get back to you within one to two business days. Thank you for joining us today. Stay connected.